All right, well, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us today um, for the Intro to Social Annotation in Secondary Education presentation. Um, my name is Sonia Visser and I work at Hypothesis on their education team. I wanna thank you all for joining. Today, we're going to be talking about um, collaborative social annotation and um, using Hypothesis in the classroom. Today's presentation has a focus on K through 12. However, if you are in higher education, no worries. We, um, the, the presentations are very similar. We also have a Hypothesis 101 that is solely focused on higher ed. Um, you can find any of those um, invites and, and registrations on our website at our events tab. But, um, but again, as I said, they're very similar. So I'm happy to have you join us today. Um, I'm going to be your tour guide as we go through this presentation. So annotation, what is annotation? So I'm going to read this. Uh, this is a portion of Billy Collins' marginalia poem. We have all seized the white perimeter as our own and reached for a pen, if only to show. We did not just laze in an armchair, turning pages. We pressed a thought into the wayside, planted an impression along the verge. This poem and this excerpt from the poem really does talk about our ability to make our mark, make an annotation. Um, annotations are breadcrumbs that we leave for other readers to follow and form a trail for us to follow from readers who have read the passage in the past. They help us to think critically about what we've just read, encourage us, as Billy says here, to not just laze in an armchair turning pages, but to really become an active participant. Annotation um, you know, has, has been around for a very long time. Scholars, students, and everyday readers have been annotating in books since um, really the invention of the book itself. Writing in the margins makes us better readers, more attentive, more understanding, more active, more critical. But as books and other assigned readings have moved into the digital space and moved online, we've lost that ability to practice this annotation, this skill. Um, so this is really where hypothesis steps in and makes annotation become possible in a digital environment. Within hypothesis, you can select that text to annotate you can reply to another, to another annotation. You're able to annotate in groups, search your notes. It's really bringing those digital documents alive as you would in a physical textbook. For teaching and learning, hypothesis makes reading active. And if you look at this, um, this quote from one of our English teachers, Sarah Gross, you know, it enables her students to contribute to the conversation where they're free, whether they are frequent class participants or they like to just sit back and think. It really creates a conversation where students feel comfortable contributing and all of the students are part of that conversation. Um, if you look at this assignment, you'll see um, this professor is using memes as part of annotation. So this really allows educators to think creatively on how to engage with their students um, and encouraging students to annotate using these means, the students loved it. And it really made the assignment highly interactive and fun because you're, you're coming at them um, with different modalities and different ways to engage. Hypothesis makes reading visible, both to you as the instructor and teacher, as well as to the class. They can see and interact with each other. They can uh, see each other's comments, ask questions, and debate or challenge um, their thinking. It's a new capability in this digital environment, and we can see um, just markers of students reading. Where are they confused? Where are they excited? It allows you to gauge what they're doing and how they're doing that within their reading. They also, students also have insights, not just about their own thoughts, but provide a window into what their classmates are thinking. So it really does make it a very social activity. Um, hypothesis makes reading social. And this is one of the things that we're finding from the students that they really do love. Um, as part of using hypothesis in their courses. Um, they're reading together. 
while they're in this document, this online document. Um, it, you know, I have two children, I have a 12 year old and I have a 15 year old. And while frustrating for me to sit there and watch them on their devices, you know, I'll, I'll sometimes tell them, you know, you know, let's talk to each other. And they're like, we are, we're playing a game together and we're communicating. And that is making it social for them. So this format is very comfortable for them. Um, in all individuals can contribute whether they're extroverts or introverts. And we just hear a lot of similar comments about how this levels the playing field and that students who in a lot of cases may not speak up in that face-to-face -face classroom are very comfortable to bring their ideas uh, within Hypothesis. Hypothesis is integrated within your learning management system. We work with and support um, all the major uh, learning management systems. Um, we um, allow for single sign-on. This, um, this capability has been around for a while and um, most folks really do use Hypothesis when the L within the LMS. Um, and uh, you know, we can work with you on getting that integrated within your institution. Um, it allows for um, single sign-on, as I said, gradebook integration. Um, you know, it, it allows you to make comments specifically to a student, as you can see right here, and those grades can be automatically entered into the gradebook. What can you annotate? So within Hypothesis, you can annotate PDFs, web pages, online articles, um, textbooks, and open education resources. And coming soon will be eBooks um, as well. And then another thing that I mentioned a little bit earlier was this um, multi-modality of annotation. So within Hypothesis, you can use texts, links, images, videos, you can bring in URLs, um, different websites, equations. So it really allows you to interact with the students and they can interact with each other um, in, in many different ways. Um, what I wanna do right now is show you hypothesis within the learning management system. I'm gonna show you today an example of an assignment in Canvas. This is again, just one of the LMSs that we interact with and, and integrate with. Um, and, but the integration with Canvas is very similar to our other integrations. Um, if you could put in the chat what learning management system you are using, um, that way we can follow up with you some information um, regarding that learning management system and that integration as well. So I'm going to toggle over to um, our Canvas course. This is a Literature 404 course. And you'll see we have numerous assignments within this course. I'm going to click on uh, this one assignment. It's the Mary Oliver Wild Geese Poem Assignment. And if you look, this assignment is similar to what you would have um, with any assignment in, in Canvas where what we're asking the students to do is look for character, setting, structure, um, locate an example of one of these elements, create an annotation and explain that. I'm gonna click into the poem itself. And you'll see immediately that hypothesis um, it just lives right here within this sidebar. I can minimize hypothesis. I can pull that out. Um, I can even um, turn off the annotation so you can read the document cleanly. Um, and to interact with hypothesis, it's as simple as highlighting those words that you want to annotate. And you have two options. As a student, um, you can highlight, which would mean that those highlights are private to you, or you can annotate. And within this annotation, you can use text. You can, as I mentioned, bring in a, a link. You can bring in an image, or you can bring in, um, the, as I mentioned before, that formula. We support that latex language for math. So if you're not teaching uh, social science, but you're using some, uh, you're using, um, uh, you're, you're teaching in a course where you would need that, um, we support that as well. So as you can see here, we've got you know, the image here that, that will appear. So really your students can interact and, and make their um, explanations and the annotations um, very unique to themselves. And uh, you can require different modalities um, when you're assigning um, hypothesis as well. The other thing that I mentioned earlier is tagging. 
You can have students put in specific words um, and, and tagging really allows you to filter the annotations. Um, this allows you to, um, to call on different students that may have chosen the same tag and allow for a deeper discussion. Um, there's many different ways that you can use tagging um, within your course. Once a student and, and you've annotated, um, you can then post your annotation specifically to Literature 404, which in this case is the entire course, or you can post to only yourself. And this allows for students who may want to take a little bit more time to, to think about um, you know, what they want to say, they can come back to it and post at a later date. Um, and so once they've done that, then students, as you can see, they can reply to, uh, to the annotations, either as you as a professor can or a student can reply to each other. Um, when Hypothesis is integrated within your learning management system, you can create a reading assignment, as I mentioned earlier, with the URL or with a PDF. Um, and PDFs, they do need to be accessible. Um, and um, in other words, that the text in the PDF does need to be selectable and it can't just be a picture of the text. So um, just a couple of, um, of tips there for when you're, when you're annotating um, with specific PDFs. With Hypothesis, we offer a pilot program. Um, this pilot program really does allow you to get started with Hypothesis um, and really helps you um, effectively to um, gather interest within your institution and, and really start to roll Hypothesis out. These are some of the secondary schools and systems that are partnering with us that have started with um, pilots and have moved on into subscriptions. Um, and then we have close to 300 higher ed and K-12 institutions that are partnering and working with us and subscribing with us. Um, with that, we wanna thank those institutions and the folks running them on their campuses because they've been true partners with us. And when you join our pilot programs, um, you really do provide a, a lot of feedback for us that really does help us make important product decisions um, going forward. What does our pilot include? So we provide technical support and pedagogical support. Um, I have worked in, in the educational industry for the past um, 15 plus years. And I will say that Hypothesis is support is um, top notch. We provide tier one technical support. We work with um, your LMS admins and anyone at your institution um, from a technical standpoint. And, and then we also have a success team. And these folks work with you pedagogically. So they provide one-on-one -on -one, um, meetings, workshops. They host um, trainings for your, your faculty, for your teachers, and really work to customize customize professional development um, within the organization. So they're here to really make sure that a hypothesis um, really meets your goals and is um, fully, fully used throughout the entire, the entire institution. Um, one of the ways to get started right now is with a free trial. Um, this allows you to immediately get, get set up. Um, it's a special offer for any of our interested teachers. So you can really get set up and explore, try out an assignment. Um, you know, we'll help you to see how easy it is to incorporate. Um, and we also will give you um, many ideas on how to start to plan your course using Hypothesis. We have resources from, from other institutions who, um, you know, best practices and tips and tricks along the way. Um, if you would reach out to us, you can either uh, go ahead and type your information in the chat so we can follow up with you. You can email us at that education at hypothesis website or visit our own our, our website um, and uh, and let us know because we'd love to get you all involved in our pilot and our, our trial program. Um, another feature that, and another thing that we love to, to highlight and welcome for you to take a look at is our liquid margins. This is a show where we bring in instructors across the country who are using Hypothesis in their classroom to talk about how they're using it, what is working. Um, it's a way for, for anyone to, to at any time go in and, and just kind of listen to um, what, what is making it work for those students, for their, for their students, for their classes. 
classes. We have, as you can see here, um, math, we've got chemistry, we have um, biology instructors. So it is really across the entire discipline areas that um, folks are using hypothesis and liquid margins, which is on our website, um, will allow you to take a look at what are some of the wonderful things that other, um, other instructors are doing um, across the country. And then um, one of the last things I want to mention today is that we host a I Annotate um, conference. This is our eighth annual conference. We've um, done this every year except for 2020. Um, we missed it last year, but we're so excited to be bringing this back. Um, that is going to be taking place June 21st through the 25th. Um, I'll have one of my colleagues um, that is working with me in Hypothesis to put the registration link in the chat. So if you want to um, just go ahead and, and, and click there, um, it's also on our website. But this is um, free and it allows you to gather information from um, speakers at, and, and different folks that really are talking about the importance of social collaborative annotation. Um, so we definitely recommend for you to share this with any of your colleagues. We'd love to have you join us at this I Annotate um, conference just coming up in, in a month from now, um, June 21st through the 25th. I want to thank you. I want to see um, if there's any, I think we've answered all of the chat questions. Is there anything that I'm just going to quickly look? Um, I think we've answered all of those. Does anyone have any other questions that that they'd like to um, for me to answer before before we sign off today? All right. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us. Um, please, um, as I said, here is our web page. Um, join, go to our website, get get information about um, our. Uh, our, you know, anything there on our pilot program, on our liquid margins, on our I annotate, um, and then um, definitely email us um, at education at um, hypothesis for further information to join us for our pilot program. We would love, love to have you um, join us at any point. Oh, we have one more question. Um, public domain. Yes. Yeah, so any, um, any website you can, you can upload information from any website, you can use it any URL, um, as well as anything that that is a PDF. And I think we saw here, um, as I'm looking through the chat, they talked about um, optimizing how to optimize a PDF, we do have a tool, it's um, how to optimize PDFs that we can work with you to make sure that so so that is, that is absolutely true. And does this integrate with grading like a discussion board? Yes. So um, working with your different LMSs, um, that grade book is integrated. Um, so that that is true. We you can integrate with the grade book, um, journal article from our library. So yes, so the the journal articles. What a lot of folks, what other professors will use do is um, they will take those articles and make them into PDFs. Um, and we are, as I mentioned, going forward looking to do um, to integrate with eBooks. And so that is something that's also coming um, in the future. But um, Andrea, we, I'll, we'll definitely follow up with you on um, using those articles from the library as well. So, all right, well, wonderful. Well, thank you again for joining us today. And um, we look forward to hopefully having you join our pilot program. Thank you so much.